And this is it. We are going down. The countdown has begun. The third game between Jalizug and Mouse Esports Thorzane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is game three between Star Tales July and Mouse Esports Thorzane. The map is crossfire. The game is tied. And the final match has now started. In the bottom left, we have the Blue Terran player, the hero, the TSL3 champion, Mouse Sports Thorzane. And in the top right, the Zerg legend from Brood War, now a legend in StarCraft II, the God of War, Star Tales July. And uh, this might not be the last time we see these guys compete either. Thorzane is on his way to compete in the GSL in August. And they very, they very might meet again, but now we are here and Thorzane, let's see what he's going to do. Supply Depot first of all, on the edge of the ramp and Jalizek, how is he going to open up here? Will he be going for early spawn and pull? Will he be brave enough to go for a hatchery first on this map? And two racks play is very common here, so we'll have to see, does Thorzane go for the refinery? Does he continue with the barracks? And I am so excited, 1-1 one, one between these two amazing players. I mean, I, I have seen pretty much no Terran play late game as well as Thorzang does. Mm. Just having beautiful transition after transition, and then not even adding on more barracks, but getting ghosts. And, you know, people love to talk about the EMP, love to talk about the snipe of the ghosts, but no one talks about the damage output. Ghosts do as mm. much damage to light as Marauders do to heavy. I know a lot of you like to call Marauders Imba because they're so good. <laughs> That's the way ghosts are to that Muta Ling mix, and then you can snipe the Bane Lings. A very strong unit in Terran versus Zerg late game. And July Zerg is going to open up Hatchery first, and it looks like he's going to go 14 spawn and pull a little bit safer than previously on the, on the first map. We saw wow. him go up to 16 supply and then add on that spawn and pull. So it's going to be a uh, 15-14 build, 15 Hatchery into 14 spawn and pull. And uh, in the meantime, looking over at Thorzane's base, has got the refinery up and will be adding on uh, that factory soon. And we'll have to see what kind of style Thorzane's going to bring out because that previous game really surprised me. And I oh, hadn't yeah. seen anything like that from a town player at all. Yeah, double marine, double hellion. You saw me. I was at a loss for words. And man, the Apollo, it is almost impossible to get me to shut up. <laughs> Thorzane coming in with that remarkable opening, exploiting the big weakness of Taldarim Altar. And uh, there is an SCV there, and a Marine pushing out. Will he be able? To, will, well, will he build a bunker to kind of create some pressure on July Zerg? We've seen a lot of players utilize that position, well, not that position, but slightly south of that. But uh -oh. Thorzane's comfortable with this. Might be able to snipe an Overlord. I mean, six links. Oh, three drones are coming out though to push away this Marine. And uh, this is July Zerg. Oh, trying to get this around though. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, and he does. No, oh, does not. White managed to get it, losing a drone. Can he get a second drone? That would be huge. But right now, Thorzane is just wasting a ton of mining time for July. We'll be canceling this bunker. Mm. And uh, he's going to add on the reactor onto the factory. And he's going to transition from here into reactor Hellions, adding on the command center now. And uh, depending on Thorzane's micro, he could get a lot of damage done here. There's a lot of players, and especially Jalizek, like to defend with Lynx only and with good micro, getting up to that six Hellion count, he could do quite a lot of damage here. And it looks like July moves up the ramp. He will see that there's the reactor going down. He has a clear sense of what is coming up, building himself a fast spine crawler, getting the second gas up. First gas first up. First gas, Excuse yeah. Me. Whoa. That is a late first gas. That really goes to show why that pressure is so strong from Thorzane. And he's Whoa. not actually switching it up with the factory. He's just going to go Marines on this reactor. And it looks like he's going to... Is he going to switch up this factory? Indeed, he's going to switch over this factory with this starport. So this is another interesting opening by Thorzane here. Uh, is he going to use this factory for anything? Or is he just going to go straight into this Banshee? It looks like he's going to go Banshee. And that's really confusing for Jalizo because he's oh, expecting... Yeah. Uh, more, most definitely expecting some kind of Hellion play here. He does have an Overlord on the left-hand side to sacrifice if need be, though. I mean, this is a brilliant play by Thorzane for two big reasons. This is a strong play 
anyways. It doesn't matter. You can give your opponent vision for the first 10 minutes of this game, and Thorzane is still going to come out in a very strong position. But also, because the double Hellion opening is so common, it has that added bonus of maybe throwing the opponent off, and it looks like July Zerg, though, a little too good for that, getting a super early third queen. He is suspecting something. He did. He popped. He actually popped up the ramp with a link and uh, saw that the reactor was still there with the barracks. Now sees the Banshee, knows exactly what's going on. Uh, does he have an Evo Chamber out yet? No, just now going to start it. And uh, like you said, does have that third queen just about to pop and should be able to defend against this. There is no cloak, but now we do see two more barracks, or sorry, just one more barracks being added on to this tech lab and this expo should be going down to the natural quite soon. So it looks like the two Kizel Naga watchtowers are Julys for the taking. One Marine from Thorzane down at the bottom right corner. We do also see that tanks are getting produced. Siege mode very quickly popping up. Thorzane desperately needs that siege mode to siege up on this high ground to defend his expansion. Without stim, without combat shield, he's going to be in a very rough position. Looks like Corporal Banshee getting five kills. Yeah, got a few kills there just looking at the units lost. Um, only managing to uh, kill one there, so... Uh, oh, well, actually, no, he got five kills there with that one Banshee, so... Um, well, actually, including the start of the game, so I suppose it was only about two or three with that one Banshee. Uh, but still doing a bit of damage, though. Didn't really has to pull back now as we see the Siege tank sieging up and will be lifting down that command center. The bunker is now being placed on the lower ground. Overseer about to move in and scout exactly what's happening here. And again, Thorzane is just going to be in the fortunate position of having a really strong opening. Thorzane is actually not going to go for an early push. We see him going for the combat shield first, almost always a sign that a player is in the mood to be defensive. This one orbital command just checking to make sure there's no zerglings behind here, maybe? No, now he's going to land and take the expansion. <laughs> Bunker going down. Thorzane now finally establishing his second base, and both players quite even. And uh, Jelizek actually invested in with these two queens. Obviously got them a lot earlier to help defend against any Banshee. He's going to use them for creep spread. We haven't really seen too much creep spread from Jelizek um, in this series at all. So it's going to be very useful in this game. And now we do have the Spire added on. And currently at 250 gas. We'll start being able to save up. And most likely be able to get about 9 Mutalus out by the time that's done. But Thorzane, who is going to be pushing Whoa. out here. Doing the exact opposite of what I said he was likely to do. Oh demonstrating why he is in this game and I am just the caster. And Jelizek managed to just get a split second control of that Zelnaga tower and saw this attack coming. If he hadn't have saw that, this could have done a lot of damage with 12 links and now nine banelings are being morphed in here. But no speed at all for those bane links. They're gonna have to do the slow march. He loses the Banshee and he will be sieging up. This is some good positioning by Thorzane. And there are the Banelings marching in. No Stim! Oh, no Stim at all! And he loses them! Oh, and 16 keys. Links about to come out, Day 9. They should be able to clean up. Actually, there are a few Marines coming to support. So it looks like with the one medevac there, he could do a lift up retreat, but instead, Thorzane is going to continue to power forward. Oh, he really does not want to unseize that tank. Ooh. That is a very unfortunate situation. Oh, he's not going to unseize. He's going to lift it up. That's really good. He's going to lift it up and put that in a better position here. Thorzane having a, quite a strong grasp on Jelizek. Now, Mulus are going to come out very shortly, though. Gosh, having such fast thinking, landing that Viking, continuing to do the damage. There's the scan. Only three Mutalists coming out, and notice the theme we've seen in all three games. Jelizerk has almost never been able to take a third base early on. The exact opposite of usual ZVT. But now Jelizerk moving in, picking off the Marines. Can he pick them off in time? The Viking, no, no! not on that plane. Oh, finally lifting no. up. Thorzane trying to move forward, will pick off one Mutalist. Oh, he just but doesn't have the Marine counts. Oh, we'll likely be forced to retreat. Thor's ain't going to have to do a total pullback. And these Mutalists will be able to chase down absolutely everything. Oh, no, this is so bad. Marines going down two Medivacs and a tank being exposed right now. If he gets all three, that could be huge. Tank goes down. He picks it Whoa. up. I think the Mutalists are going to clean this up anyway. Oh, tank does go down. And Stim nearing completion. There it is. Stim is done. He does manage to Stim. Thor Zane in a rough spot food-wise, but we do see in that unit counting station, Thorzane again ahead in food. And 
we have eight bailings being morphed on the edge of this Ooh. area here for Jalizerg. One siege tank is going to be crucial in defending against that. I mean, the siege tank has great placement, but Jalizerg could pick it off. And there's the first shot going down. He targets the Baneling, gets a big hit off. Again, can he stay alive? Oh, oh, big hit to the SCVs. But can he get to this expansion in time? There's a lot of Marines up on the high ground. And Thorzane moving down. Again, Jalizerg's curse is that he's generally a little too over-aggressive. But in this point, it is paying off beautifully. Nothing mining at that natural expansion. Thorzane in a very rough spot. 100 supply versus 63 of Thorzane right now. Uh, Jalizerg actually didn't get plus one for his Mutalist, so they're stuck at 0-0 zero, zero at the moment. And Marines will be able to chase this up. But once again, Thorzane on the back foot, but has the potential to stabilize just like we saw in game one if he can hold off this harassment here. I mean, July Zerg smartly building nothing but drones, taking those extra two geysers. Oh, he loses all his mutilists, only two remain. He actually oh. went back into all these marines and now loses all of them there. And that is what kind of Thorzane needs to come back into this. Yeah, I mean, Thorzane definitely needs to begin cutting back on tanks and making lots of Marines to begin ramping up his aggression. We see him doing exactly that, getting the plus one, but July using the opportunity to take a fast gold. And 15 drones about to morph too. Uh, and that's up to 77 drones now versus 43, 44 SCVs now. Uh, that's quite a big lead and now he will only go into units once again. He's got to that comfort zone of 77 drones. And as we can see, four Mutalists are being made. And now, incoming the Mutalists, will they be able to do any damage? No, they're actually turning around. And Thorzane going for a very fast third here, moving out with this command center, despite being harassed all the time and Baronet slugging. <laughs> well, Thorzane does know that the longer the game goes on, the better of a position he will be in. Again, the master of the late game, Thorzane, has a lot of comfort once he can get those big Marine Thor mixes up. And a lot of upgrades for, uh, for Jalizerg now. We have the centrifugal hooks, the plus one flyers attack, borrow and the melee attack all being researched at one. He has a lot of gas right now so he can afford to do so. He's going to go ahead and get this uh, gold base up and running just like you said. And now Thorzane going for a bit of a push here. Does scan. No bailings are planted here at all. And uh, at the same time, oh, Jalizerg not going to go harass with these. And uh, this is Thorzane's moment right now. Thorzane could do huge wonders with this push. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Ooh, some big Mutalist losses right there. There's a second scan by Thorzane. Doesn't want to get caught off guard again. One of the most careful players of slowly moving forward with those tanks, scanning a lot. July now getting that centrifugal hooks that will let his Banelings roll very quickly, but the creep spread is not nearly enough. And there is a lot of Zerglings and Banelings in the middle of the map here. And uh, slowly but surely, Thorzane bunny hopping towards Jalizerg. But in the meantime, so many units are being produced. 171 supply for Jalizerg, 124 for Thorzane. And look at this flanking attack by Jalizerg. Ooh, but I don't know if this is a good idea. We see July running into a huge number of tanks. Now going to go for the natural expansion. There is finally the first free unit he has seen all attack long. SCVs are running back. He will again take out the natural, but at what cost? He's going to lose a lot of Zerglings. If he can take out the command center, that would do it, though. Oh, and he's going down into red. 300 health, two, 200, 100. Oh! Pulls mules, can he heal it? No! Oh! July's counterattack is successful. Only the bottom right remains. Thorzane needs to do wonders with this next push. But does he have the unit count? 80 supply difference right now. Thorzane needs to do something. So Mu is picking off. Oh, just getting a tank down to half health. So many Lings and Bailings right now. Plus one melee attack. If we look at the Marines only, well, actually just equal to plus one as well. But he's got to be so careful to get a proper engagement and position here. It is just fast units for July. Lings, Mutas, Bane Lings. July is going for it. I don't like this decision. There's too many tanks at the backside, but will Jalizer continue to engage? He does. Target firing on the Banelings. Thorzane annihilating those Banelings with relative ease, but many still remain, still chasing everything down despite phenomenal control. Thorzane has almost no Marines remaining. The 16 Mutalists of July will clean up the natural expansion. Has a mule not even doing anything at all. <laughs> 
And the God of War cleans up. 154 to 77 supply. And unfortunately, it looks like Thorstein is on the back foot now. A bunch of Zerglings have been made. And it looks like he should be going for a killer blow now. As soon as the siege tank fires, and in comes July. And July's with a double stamp by Thorzain, picking off all the Zerglings, but the Mutalists count too much. Thorzain's front is overrun. And the Jeez. good game, July, the God of War, takes it down two to one in one of the closest series we have seen at this tournament. And even though we've been casting for over 12 hours now, that is something that we've both been looking forward to, that game and that series. And, uh, and it Thor delivered. It delivered, and Thorzain shows that the Koreans are not, you know, they are beatable here. Taking a game off July Zerg, and uh, even I asked MC before, I said, you know, July Zerg win-win, or Thorzain win-win, he says July, I mean, July Zerg win easy. So he's quite confident in the Korean skill, but mm -hmm. Thorzain cracking it open a little bit here. I mean, it just makes you wonder what would have happened if in game one, mm. Thorzane hadn't have lost all those units to the Banelings. I mean, that could have been a total turnaround, mm. but either way, that's gonna put Thorzane starting off 0-1 in his group, really rough, six person groups, only two advanced, so now Thorzane essentially needs to win every remaining match. Yeah, it's gonna be very hard. Drop one more game on you, the edge of you know, being knocked out of the tournament, just like we saw Grubby before, very upset about going out, even though he won three games, lost two, and uh, it looks like we're just going to be taking around a 10-minute break, I feel. Uh, before we go into the final game of this evening, after a long 12, 13-hour day cast, it is going to be We Made Fox Moon versus Tarson. That is going to be another killer Terran versus Zerg. Moon plays a wildly different style from Tarson. Mm. We're going to be taking a look at that. The first map will be on Shakura's Plateau. So whatever you do, do not go anywhere. I am Day9. And I am an exhausted D-Apollo. And this is DreamHack Summer 2011 <laughs> group stage action coming up right after this. The fast one, light to protection. ESET NOM32 antivirus gives you less lag and more frag for your Windows, Mac or Linux computer.